three, two, one. Ready, set. Hey, I'm Father Mark Mary with the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal, and this is Ascension Presents. It's been a word which I've been praying with for months and months and months, and I think it's a super great source of encouragement for myself, for you. And we're going to go to the gospel that we read last Sunday, which we, we call Divine Mercy Sunday, and the story of Thomas and the wound of Jesus and touching the wounds of Jesus, and how we can not only touch the wounds of Jesus, but we can be the resurrected wounds of Jesus, which give life to others and it's super helpful and super encouraging looking at the gospel right and, and the disciples they're there and thomas is saying like unless i unless i place my finger in his wounds like i'm not going to believe and jesus appears and he speaks to thomas and our understanding our reading of it um through, through tradition has just been that jesus reveals right reveals his wounds the resurrected wounds and thomas touches the wounds um, and comes to believe and it's fascinating like let's look at a couple of different aspects of it first of all it's very noteworthy he, he continues to have the wounds, right? Like in Jesus' resurrection, he could have had totally pure and clean hands as if those wounds weren't there. But there's something about the fact now that they're, they're, they're healed wounds, the redeemed wounds, the resurrected wounds. And there's an insight given to us in this gospel account about why that might be. That somehow by touching the resurrected wounds of Jesus, others are going to come to believe. And that's what happens. That's what happens with Thomas, who becomes a great apostle and saint and martyr. He touches the resurrected wounds of Jesus and they heal the wound of doubt or disbelief um, in Thomas and he goes on to become this incredible, incredible evangelist, apostle, disciple. My, my insight is this, or my thought is this, is that you and I are really and truly uh, the mystical body of Christ. We're going to be wounded, but if these wounds are redeemed and resurrected, others are going to be able to touch these resurrected wounds and come to healing in their own lives. And so the idea is this, right? Like we are all going to be wounded and it's going to be the result of, it could be personal sin, it could be communal sin, or it could just be from the effects of living in a fallen world or some sort of combination or culmination of all of these together. But the reality is we're all going to suffer and we're all going to have wounds. But these wounds are meant to be healed and these wounds are meant to be um, transformed and resurrected through God's love, once they've been touched and redeemed and healed by Jesus through the grace of the Holy Spirit, now these actually, these wounds can be um, healing and redemptive for other people when they touch them. So I want to look at them a couple, a couple of different ways. Like what, like what does this mean? I think kind of a classic, more natural example is going to be the idea of like a sponsor in an AA. A person who, who struggles with, who experiences alcohol addiction, right? Um, that's a wound. That's a real wound, and that's going to be the, the addiction disease is going to be a wound itself. The effects of that are going to be other wounds. But as this person comes to AA and works the steps and comes to a place of, of ongoing sobriety, although it's always, you know, day by day, now they're going to be able to mentor another young man or woman, older man, older woman, who comes in who's experiencing a similar struggle. They've experienced the wound through their working of the steps, through their coming to the program, through their reaching out to a higher power. Right? They're going to be, this wound is going to start to be healed. And now others are going to be able to be, touch this wound through coming to their experience, through accepting their mentorship. And it's going to be a source of healing for others. All right, so we have these wounds. And the, the, the wounds of Jesus were resurrected. Boom. 100% resurrected wounds. The wounds that we experience in this life, they're not necessarily going to be totally healed uh, 100% on this side of eternity. So, for example, if you're in 12-step 12, 12 program, one of the ideas is like you continue to say, like, I am an alcoholic. Like, you understand that it continues to be day by day, that the addiction or the disease is not 100% cured. You have to get healed enough to the point that you can offer your own uh, mentorship or wisdom or experience or guidance to another. If there's a person who's struggling with alcohol addiction and they just keep living in their addiction 100%, that's going to be a wound and it's going to be a deepening wound and it's going to be a wound which keeps growing, but it's not going to be a wound now which is going to be life-giving for another. It's just going to be, um, it's going to be a wound which actually is going to be hurtful. But if it starts to be healed and redeemed, especially through grace, especially through God, especially through the sanctifying and merciful touch of Jesus, it's going to be a source 
of healing for others. I'm going to look to a very serious example and then a lesser example, which is maybe what a lot of people experience. So for example would be this, is if you're a parent um, who's a person of faith and you through a great tragedy, you lose one of your children. Um, it can be through, through an accident. It could be through um, you know, a school shooting. It can be through um, a disease. Okay, that's going to be, that's going to be a, like an incredibly deep wound. And the healing is going to be when you're able to reconcile and to stay in relationship with God. If you're able to experience this, this great pain and this great suffering and this great wound, but you're still able to understand and reconcile it with the understanding of a God who is good and who is Father and who is cares and who is alive and at work in the world, as you come into contact with those who suffer, those who experience a tragedy, from your own experience, from the resurrection, if you will, of your own wound, you're going to be able to offer both natural insight and wisdom, but also supernatural grace to those who experience some tragedy in their own life, if it's the same, or if it's um, another another type of great tragedy, which causes them to question their understanding of, of, of where is God in all of this. And I think if you, if you, many of you are familiar with like the Magnificat, it has, you know, the, the daily readings, gospel, a number of prayers, but also has some of these writings, particularly of like a mother who lost one of her children at the Connecticut um, Sandy Hook shooting. And for me, like I keep going to that because now the way in which she's experienced this great tragedy of losing her child and is able to keep wrestling with this and keep walking with the Lord. For me, it's a great, it's a great source of encouragement and a great source of, of life and of grace and of, of growing in my own personal trust of God and his goodness. Now on a much like lesser example. For me, I experienced uh, one of my, I experienced a pretty serious wound at an early age, um, kind of ongoing of gossip. Being around gossip was one of like, one of the things that really hurt me a lot. And I just sort of had this experience of nothing that I say is just going to be with the person I say it to. Uh, it's going to be for, for everybody. And right, and so that, that trust was broken pretty early on. And so it led me to, to not sharing things. And that's, that's a wound that started at a young age. In some ways it's healing, but it's not totally healed. It's still a real thing. But the way in which others are able to touch this wound now and in which I'm able to bring the resurrected power of Jesus to others would be a great example, would be like in a pastoral counseling or spiritual direction or confession um, atmosphere. I'm not telling them like, oh, I got hurt by gossip, so you can trust me. But there's just, there's an authority and there's a confidence. There's a way in which I enter into those spaces. It's safe. It's safe. And you can tell me, you can tell me whatever you need to tell me. And I'm just going to receive it and I'm going to keep it here. I'm going to love you in it. And it's okay. And without knowing the cause of that, just touching the way in which that's been redeemed, you can just see it be a source of grace and of comfort and of healing and of peace for so many penitents or so many people who come and, ch and chat with me. And so this, this is a way in which my own a wound that I've experienced, which I've experienced with the Lord, allowed him to help sanctify and heal, is now a source of grace um, for others. Each and every one of us have had in the past or will have or continue to have wounds. Again, through our own fault, maybe through the mistakes or the sin of another, or just because we live in a fallen world. And while we definitely would not say, we can't say that God always wants this difficulty or this suffering or this pain, we can always say that although God doesn't cause the wound, he always wants to enter into it and sanctify it and heal it and to make it something that can be life-giving for ourselves and for others. And, and the, the kind of a scripture we can keep going back to is Romans 8, 28. For God is at work for the good in all things for those who love him. What is it that you might be struggling with? What is it that you might be experiencing as a fresh wound right now? And it can be, it can be rejection. It can be a breakup. It can be um, an illness. It can be a loss of a loved one. It can be financial insecurity. It can be being separated, you know, from, from those you love for an extended period of time. All of these are real wounds. They're real wounds, just like Jesus had real wounds. But Jesus, the Lord wants to and can enter into these wounds really and truly. As real as the wounds are, even more real and more powerful is the tender touch and the redeeming touch of Jesus. If it's financial insecurity right now, and as you experience and you struggle with and trust yourself again and again and again to divine providence, even right now, as you don't see how you're going to be able to take care of yourself, where you're going to work for your family. As you 
stay in relationship with the Lord, and as he brings about healing, as in he shows his presence and his providence in your life, now you're going to be able to t- bring this resurrected wound down the road to somebody else who's dealing with a struggle with trust. And it's going to be life-giving to another. It's going to be giving faith um, to another. Maybe you're struggling with, with like a mental illness, something very deep and something that you really don't like. And it's really, it's a really, really acute source of suffering for you as you stay in relationship with the Lord, right? Um, he doesn't cause that suffering. He doesn't will it directly, but he enters into it and he responds and he's there with his, his loving and tender presence. And as you stay in a relationship with him, he wants to heal it and bring redemption into it and, and bring his love into it and bring his light into it and bring his grace into it. And now down the road, when you come in contact with other people who might be struggling with mental illness themselves or that for another, you're going to be able to be this redeemed, resurrected wound of Jesus for them. And as they touch it by coming into contact with you, it's like them touching the mystical body of Christ and they're going to be given light and faith and confidence again. As you experience the wound, keep it in relationship with the Lord and give him permission and give him time to resurrect it and to heal it. But also understand that you don't, you don't suffer in vain. And it's always, of course, a share in the sacrifice of Jesus. But also it's a share in, in the resurrection of Jesus or of the, the healing mission of Jesus. That is, others down the road come in contact with your healed, resurrected, or healing, resurrecting wounds. You're going to be able to give faith. You're going to be able to give hope. You're going to be in, give encouragement to those God brings in your path. So my brothers and sisters, this is just a moment to keep, keep in relationship and to keep going. Stay in relationship and keep going. This is why we chose... <laughs> and keep going back to this tagline. Tag we're pilgrims. We're journeyers of healing and of resurrection in this life. But little by little, day by day, step by step, poco a poco, vamos a llegar. We're going to make it. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again next week. God bless y'all. Peace.